Hey guys, this is National Master Kevin Yang, back at it with another video. As I promised, the part 3 with 23 dragons is here. So, let's get to the position. So, I played this move Bishop G5, and you might think, ugh, that's, that's kind of far on the board. Why, why Bishop G5? Well, here's the reason. I'm going to show you a very unprincipled way to play the game. So, after bishop g7, I play e4, completely standard, 23 dragons plays d6, and I like to say, I like to do what's called a psychological scare. This move gives scares, but h4. Now, by the looks of it, it looks kind of interesting. The goal is bishop takes knight, then play h5, or just play h5 all the way. Just with bishop e2, maybe play h5. The other way is knight e2, knight g3, h5, all available. But what if our 23 dragons plays h5? It's... Then I have to think, okay, what else can I do? Well, play f3. Now, the idea of getting our member 23 dragons to play h5 is that now this bishop can no longer be kicked out with the h-pawn. The bishop has to be kicked out with the f-pawn, and right now the knight is occupying that square. So now this bishop feels like it's done its job, right? So I play f3. I just want to protect my pawn. I want to maybe prevent someone from going to this square. And after knight c6, I play d5. I want to push it a little bit. After knight e5, I bring my knight out. I want to bring the knight here. Simple as that. Knight h7. You say, okay, you want to take my bishop? But I like my bishop. So I'm going to go back to f4. And after e6, very interesting, I can either play knight d4, or I can take, or I can do something else. I decide I take, bishop takes, knight d4. And r23 dragons plays the move g5. And here's the first moment where I see opportunity. Now, Every time you make a move, there's always the feeling, okay, what weakness do I make? Right? You play g5, and now the first thing I think is, look at that f5 square. Right? That's the first thing I think. The second thing I think is, what if I just take? Right? Then the knight takes, what do I think of it? Is it, is it good for me? Well, yes, it is good for me, because my rook can come out, right? So I thought this idea was good, but it felt a little bit too bold, because to black, black can usually play bishop f6 and just, like, target the pawn sometimes. But in this case, it's not really that effective, because there's g3. But... Usually, in some positions like this, this pawn is a weakness. And by playing the move g5, now, after taking, right, let's say takes, knight takes, now the thing I'm going to be focusing on is this guy. This guy is going to be the weakness on the h-file, right? I don't have a pawn to defend no more. I'm just attacking now. And so I could play something like queen d2 here. But okay, let's get back to the game. I just feel like there's a little bit of an inaccuracy in that. But I played knight takes e6 first. I said, I like my bishops, right? So I'm going to trade my knight for bishop. It's a little bit of a mistake. Let me tell you why. After h takes g5, knight takes g5. I want to play queen d2, 
night. In this case, I'm threatening the night, and I'm getting ready to castle. Now, knight takes, pawn takes, pawn takes, knight takes. What if I play queen d2 now? I thought about this in my calculations. I kind of forgot about it. Now, don't look at the engine. Don't look at the engine. I know you're tempted to look at the engine. But guess what? Look at these two guys. They're on the forking square. Let me just bring in the family fork. And after pawn takes, the knight brings in the family fork. Oh man, those are juicy. So, that's what I forgot about, right? I was going to play queen d2, and then I thought, ay ay ay, they're both eyeing this square, right? So I can't let that happen. So I played bishop e2 first. And after h4, thinking, okay, I'm going to play h3. Right? I'm going to weaken this pawn, and I'm going to maybe go for him. Or I can bring my knight back, get the bishop in, get the bishop into this square. Very interesting idea as well. I play queen d2. Going for the knight. And here's where I win. H3. Bold, but not quite the kind of precision. Because after bishop takes, pawn takes g2, thinking, okay, I'm going to promote. I'm going to capture. But guess what? Check. That's the only thing that our friend 23 dragons missed. The check. And after bishop takes, you notice I was thinking about castle queenside, king f2, or something else. I don't know what the something else is, but those are the two options I see. I played king f2. Wasn't the best according to the engine. According to the engine, castle queenside is better. Transfer the rook over. Threaten the queen. Right after bishop f6, the correct move is bishop e3 with the idea of rook g1, rook takes. Right? I guess that's fine. But instead, in the game, I played king f2. I was thinking, let me secure my rook this way. Right? But after bishop f6, I sort of realized why king f2 is a little bit worse than castling. Because if I take, and queen takes, let's say I play rook g1, right? Now, black can play queen h4 check, I take on g2, and there's castles. And you can see that it looks a little bit worrying at first, that black has a check, maybe a check later. So I guess that's why castling queenside was better than king f2. So yeah, just an idea of what the thoughts are. So after bishop f6, I played f4. I said, you know what? Don't come over here. Don't come over here. I'm going to break your post first. So knight g6, right? So thinking that I was attacking the knight, I'm actually not, because the moment I capture the knight, you capture my bishop. So I'm not threatening anything. In fact, black could play queen e7 here, and there'd be nothing, because pawn takes, bishop takes bishop. Completely fine. So, if I'm not threatening anything, now make your move. And I was thinking after bishop takes, king takes, I was thinking... Queen e7, castles, bring the rook out, something like that. But, yes. So instead, our friend played knight g6. And at this moment, I said, oh my god, sigh of relief. Because now I play bishop h5. I freeze up the king and bishop. He's 23 dragons, is forced to play king f7. I play rook g1, and 
I don't know what happened with bishop e5. Probably a slip up, but that was the game. So, in terms of where our friend 23 dragons went wrong, I felt like... Hmm. I actually don't know. I feel like maybe c6 is a slightly better pawn break than e6. Because my knight would be attacking, you know, that square. And you might also think, you're attacking this square as well, right? But, um, I don't know, maybe I can bring the queen out this way. Whereas I cannot easily bring out the queen this way because there's so many pieces already here. So, just a very minor thing. Um... I guess I would say g5 was a little bit extreme, because first of all, you're exposing the f5 square. You're letting me take, right, and expose h5 as a weakness, and I should note to myself as a mistake, I should just take here, Knight takes and play queen d2, because the knight is guarding this square now. So just a reminder for me, um, so after g5, knight takes, pawn takes, pawn takes, and all that, this was the second miscalculation. Wasn't easy to see, but after bishop takes, I had this check, king f2, and the position fell apart. So, hope you learned your, you know, what to improve from the game, but you also learned some sort of strategy, right? Um, sometimes, if you want to scare your opponent, if you want your opponent to think a little bit longer, play h4 sometimes. In the oddest of times, play h4. It's very weird, but as a psychological test, Sometimes it pays off. And so, really, that's all I wanted to say, other than this maybe, G5 was risky. Other than that, keep on having fun. Thank you.